Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll give you an introduction to Lightroom Mobile and Web. Now recently, Adobe released a new cloud-based application that they're calling Lightroom CC. And they've renamed the Lightroom program that we know and love Lightroom Classic. I'm not going to talk about that cloud-based Lightroom CC application in this video. In this video, I want to show you how you can sync your photos to and from Lightroom Classic to mobile and web with just Lightroom Classic and your Creative Cloud subscription. In other words, without that Lightroom CC application, you can already do a lot. Now here in Lightroom Classic, I need to have syncing turned on. I'll click on the identity plate and I'll make sure this is on. If I saw a play button, I would click on that play button to turn it on. If you're not logged into your Creative Cloud account, it would tell you that here and you would need to log in. So if I click on the box here to turn syncing on for this collection, these photos are sent up to the cloud and then down to my mobile devices and a website that I can log into. When they're sent up to the cloud, that means that they're sent to Adobe's computers called servers in California or elsewhere. And it's from there that they're sent down to my mobile devices. Now it's not the full-sized original files that are sent. It's smart previews, which are small, compressed versions of my files. They're still raw files, but they're small, compressed versions. This is great because it doesn't take so much internet bandwidth to send them from my computer up to the cloud, and they don't take up much space on my mobile devices. But you shouldn't think of syncing them as being a backup to the cloud because they're not the full-sized originals. Now you can specify collections of photos to sync, but you can't specify folders or smart collections to sync. They have to be regular collections that you drag photos to. Watch my video on working with collections for more on how to set up collections. Now, if you know that you're going to want to sync a collection to your mobile devices when you create the collection, then in the Create Collection dialog, you can choose to sync with Lightroom CC. Now, Lightroom CC consists of Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom Web, and the cloud-based Lightroom CC desktop application. So the name of this is changed from Lightroom Mobile to Lightroom CC. But this doesn't mean that you have to use that cloud-based desktop application rather than Lightroom Classic. This basically means it will sync with whatever you're using, which will generally be just mobile and web. I'll cancel this. Also, if you like, if you find that you like working with your mobile devices, then when you import your photos from memory cards, you might want to go ahead in the file handling section and add them to a collection. That way you don't have to create the collection after import. You can click on the plus here, create the collection, and turn syncing on so that that's set up right from import. All right, let's go over to my phone so I can show you what this is all about. Here I've got the Lightroom CC application. It's available for free in the App Store for iPhones and iPads and it's also available for Android devices in the Google Play Store. I'll tap on the application to open it. Here's the collection of photos that I synced over from Lightroom Classic. I'll tap on it, and then I can go through them one at a time. I'm going to tap where it says Edit, and I'll go to Rate and Review. By the way, I don't really intend this as a tutorial on how to use Lightroom Mobile. There are too many details that I don't have time to cover, and the application gets updated and changes fairly often. My intention, though, is to give you an idea of what you can do, given that you already have Lightroom Classic and a Creative Cloud subscription. So in review, I'll slide up on the right side to give this a pick flag, and then on the left side to give it three stars. I'll swipe to the next photo. I'll slide down on the right to reject that photo. And I'll reject that one, go to the next one, give it a pick flag, and I'll give it two stars. And I'll go to the next photo and I'll pick that. 
Now I'm going to edit this photo, so I'm going to tap where it says Review, and I'll go to Edit. You'll find many of the editing tools that we have in Lightroom on our desktop. I'll crop this photo down to approximately a square. And then I'll convert this to black and white just so that we can see in Lightroom on my desktop that I have edited this photo. Let's go back now to Lightroom on my desktop. I can see the picket reject flags and the stars that I've assigned. And pretty soon we're going to see the editing that I've done on this photo. And here it is. So this happens automatically. I don't have to think about giving Lightroom Mobile some instruction to send my work. Let's go back to my phone now. I'll just mention briefly that there is the ability to add keywords here in Lightroom Mobile, but these keywords don't sync back to Lightroom Classic. They only sync to that new cloud-based Lightroom CC desktop application. So unless you're using that application, I would recommend not keywording on your mobile devices because you won't be able to take advantage of that work when you get back to your desktop computer. There's also a camera in Lightroom Mobile. When you shoot with this camera rather than the Apple one, you can shoot in manual exposure mode, you can set your ISO and your white balance, you can use manual focus. It has something called focus peaking, which will show you what's in focus and what's not in focus, and it has highlight clipping indicators, and it will capture in RAW if you have one of the newer iPhones. I think it's from the 7 and up. And you can also do that on Android as well. You can also import photos from the camera roll. I'll select a couple photos here and I'll click on, tap on Add to Photos. They'll show up in all photos, but let's go back to Lightroom on my desktop. Now by default, images that you imported into mobile and web will show up in your folders panel under a section for the device. So mine should be showing up here under imported photos under my iPhone. Now my iPhone's not plugged in. This actually is not a location on my phone. It's an LR data database in my pictures folder. You can choose to leave the photos in there or I would actually recommend that you move them to a more permanent location in your master photos folder. Mine actually have gone into an iPhone photos folder that I have sitting in pictures. I'm going to move this into my photos go here folder. Now you can set up Lightroom to have them go there right away rather than into this LR data database. I'll go up to Lightroom on the Mac or edit on a PC and into preferences. Let's take a look at the Lightroom CC tab. It used to be called Lightroom Mobile. On here, you can see your account information. You could join or purchase a subscription, in other words, if you haven't already. And you can check out your account information. Now, if you're having sync issues, sometimes it helps to delete all data. Basically, delete everything in the cloud and have Lightroom resync it from Lightroom Classic. However, don't do this until anything you've imported into mobile and web has synced to Lightroom Classic, and don't do it if you're using the cloud-based Lightroom CC application, because this will delete that entire Lightroom CC catalog. It'll be quite a shock. All right, I keep this option checked to not let my computer sleep while, while it's syncing, and here's where we can specify a location for images that we import from Lightroom Mobile or Web or the cloud-based Lightroom CC program that I'm not going to get into. So I'll check this box. Now, if I want the photos to be put in date folders, then I'll use subfolders formatted by capture date. And I would choose the same option that I choose when I import photos in the import dialog. So I generally use a month day folder within a year folder. And then later I come and I add a description to the month day folder. Now I, find, I found after a while of using this for my iPhone photos that I ended up with tons of date folders with just one or two photos in them. That was too much for me. So I personally uncheck this and 
I specify a folder in my Photos Go Here folder. So an iPhone Photos folder, for example, within Photos Go Here. Or maybe within each year folder, an iPhone Photos folder. So you would create whatever folder you want them to go into. So let me come into Photos Go Here, create a 2017 folder, and then create a folder in that called iPhone Photos. So I'll have one for each year. And I click on Choose. If your sync activity is stuck, it can help to come into Preferences here and look at any error messages that you get. All right, I'll close Preferences. Changing that location in Preferences will not change the location of any photos that are already imported. So you would still have to move photos out of this database folder into your main folder structure. Once this is empty, you can right-click and remove it. All right, let's take a look now at Lightroom Web. Lightroom Web allows us to work with Lightroom when we're on a computer that doesn't have the software. We can go to lightroom.adobe.com and you would log in if you're not yet logged in and you'd see exactly the same thing as you would see in Lightroom Mobile. You would see any photos imported into mobile or web plus the collections that you've synced over from Lightroom Classic. You can import photos. So again, if you're traveling and you have access to a web browser, you could import all your raw photos and let them sync up to the cloud. And then when you get home, those raw files would sync down to Lightroom on your desktop. You can edit your photos here in Lightroom Web with many of the tools that we have in Lightroom Classic. And you can rate and flag them and see information. I'm going to go back to Lightroom Classic. So that's a website that you use personally when you're logged in. You can also share collections of photos that you've synced with other people by sharing a link with them. That wouldn't be the lightroom.adobe.com. That's just for you. But I've synced this collection. I'll go to Grid View. Notice that I have a Make Public button. If I click on that, I will get a URL that I can share with people. I can also right-click on the collection and go to Lightroom Mobile Links, Copy Public Link to copy it to the clipboard. Then I can send that to people and let's go to the web and see what they would see. I'll paste this in here. So other people would be able to view these photos. They could play a slideshow or they could manually click through them one at a time. They could see the file name in case they need to communicate with you based on that. And then they can like and comment on your photos. Now in order to have access to the liking and commenting, they have to have an Adobe account and sign in with that account. Some pros who share albums with their clients set up a handful of Adobe accounts that they then share with those clients so that they don't have to set up their own. So I'm going to go ahead and like this photo and I'll put a comment here. I'll put this looks blurry. Now as the creator of these photos, I could view these comments and likes out on LightroomAdobe.com, but they're also going to sync back to Lightroom Classic. I'm going to take the reject flag off of this so it's not grayed out. Notice this little icon it means that this photo has comments. I'll click on it and it will open up the comments panel here and show me the likes and the comments. I could then comment back in case the viewer returns to that album and out in Lightroom Web, we would see my comment as well. Now, if you no longer want to share the album with people, then click on the Make Private button, and that URL will no longer be valid. Finally, if you don't want a synced collection to show up on your mobile devices and on the web anymore, you can click on the icon here to stop syncing the collection. Now, it's a bit confusing, but removing the collection by stopping syncing does not remove these seven photos from your mobile devices and the web. It just removes the listing of the collection. The photos will still be accessible in all photos. I'm going to click on Stop Syncing. 
if I don't want these seven photos to appear at all on mobile or web, then I'll need to come up to All Synced Photographs and remove them from here. This is another collection. So I can right click and remove from All Synced Photographs, or I can just hit the Delete key. And as this says, this won't delete these files from my hard drive or take them out of Lightroom. But by removing them from all synced photographs, I would be completely removing them from mobile and web. Let's go back down here to that collection and turn on syncing again so I can show you one final message. Let's say that I want to continue to sync this collection, but I don't want this photo to be a part of that collection. I could right click and remove from collection or hit the delete key. It's asking me to make a decision on whether I just want to remove it from the collection or whether I also want to remove it from all synced photographs, which means that it would no longer be in all photos on mobile or web. If I wanted to remain in all synced photographs, I'd click on yes. If I wanted to disappear from mobile and web entirely, I would click on no. And that would happen as long as that photo is not in another synced collection. I know this is a little bit hard to grasp, Generally, I deal with this by ignoring what's in all synced photographs, which means on my mobile device, ignoring all photos. And I just focus on what collections I'm syncing. I'll cancel. So that's the overview of working with Lightroom Mobile and Web together with Lightroom Classic. I think it's great to be able to access and work on photos when I'm away from my computer. If you've enjoyed this video, Check out my full Lightroom Fundamentals and Beyond video series. It's 22 hours of training on 101 videos. Also, please show your support by clicking on my face here and subscribing to my YouTube channel. That tells everyone that my videos are worth watching. Thank you. I'm Laura Shue.